If you know me, you know I love my light meters. I got a ton of them here and they're all from different manufacturers and they're all amazing. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys something a little unique. Matt from Raveni Labs has sent over his newest light meter. This is his incident light meter and it is quite an interesting one. It's uniquely shaped and I'll get to that in the video about why and we'll definitely be doing a field test to see how it performs in the real world. And I'm very excited about this. It's a light meter that's packed full of features that for the price range is quite impressive. So without further ado, let's jump over to the table. Let's unbox this. I'll go over a bunch of details. And if you guys have any questions in regards to this light meter, after you're done watching this video, feel free to follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. That'll be the best place to get in contact with me. And I'll try to answer all the questions you guys have. So here we have it guys. This is the Raveni Labs Incident Light Meter. As you guys can see, you have all the information back here. There's also a little QR code to find out more information if you'd like to scan it. So let's open this up and see what we got. So right off the bat, you have your little card over here and that just tells you it's uh, calibration numbers for the flash color, um, incidence and reflective metering. And there's also another QR code in the back here um, with a link to the manual, but we'll go over some details here. So hopefully I'll help you out. And in the box, we have this beautiful case made in Canada along with a pair of batteries. And let's open her up and see what this looks like. So here we have it. So this is the light meter right over here. And as you guys can see, it's a very, very uniquely shaped. And we'll get to that in a little bit of why that is and how to use it. It has a front facing reflective ambient sensor over here and another light sensor right here at the top, along with a four axis single point control. So this is the only button that you'll be using. It also has this LED screen right over here. And what we'll do is we'll actually pop in some batteries and I'll show you guys how to turn it on and we'll go over all the features. So this takes two AAA batteries and it looks like there is a micro USB port in there. That's probably for updating the firmware. The fact that it's there means that there may or may not be future updates. I also forgot to mention that on the bottom of the battery compartment right over here, you have a sync port. So if you want to connect a, a speed light to it to trigger, you can along with a small lanyard hole right on the bottom. So the way that this is intended to be used is with three fingers slid into the elastic band and the light meter actually stays on the top. And what this allows you to do is actually operate your camera at the same time that you're using your light meter, right? So you have access to the button right over here. And as you're changing your settings, you have this entire hand free and you don't have to actually hold a light meter in this hand. So you can be constantly using, working, operating your camera with the light meter in your hand the whole time. If you're curious about the dimensions, I'll actually give you a little comparison. So starting off with the biggest light meter that I own, this is the Pentax. And just to give you guys a size comparison, for those of you guys that have this spot meter, you'll know how big it is. And here is this light meter compared to the Sekonic L58, just a little bit bigger than the screen itself, ever so popular L308 series. So it is quite a bit smaller than this as well. If you're looking for a small light meter, this Raveni Labs light meter might be the one, especially if you're looking for all this additional functionality. But if you guys are looking for something that's just a reflective light meter, Raveni Labs also has their tiny, tiny light meter. This thing also has a built-in screen on the back. So if you just wanna use a little hot shoe light meter, this is it right here. And just for a little size comparison, this is what it looks like. First thing you're gonna do is press and hold the main button over here and that'll turn on your light meter. Now to get to the next menu over here, what we're gonna do is flick this button up and hold it down and this will bring up the sub menu. From in here, you can change your mode using the left and right. You can switch from incident to reflective, then to flash, then to cine. Along with that, you can also change your ISO sensitivity. So why don't we change that, let's say to 400. And then you have your exposure compensation over here. And then you have your stops that are measured in whole, half, thirds. So we'll just leave that at whole over here. And to return back to the main, you just press and hold up. So on the top over here, you have your EV ratings. 
then you have your shutter speed, your f-stop, your color temperature, and at the very bottom you have your lux and your ISO readout. To take a reading, all you're gonna do is flick up or down and that'll take a reading for you right there. And then if you wanna cycle through your combinations, all you're gonna do is click left or right and that'll cycle through the different combinations of shutter speeds or f-stops. Let's change the mode to reflective. And once that's done, you just hold back up. And now you have your reflective readout right over here. And that'll give you a reflective readout based off of the light that's reflecting off of your subject versus the incident, which is using the top light dome to measure light that falls onto your subject along with giving you the color temperature readout. Let's change this over to flash and I'll show you guys a couple of the settings here. So right over here, you have your preferred shutter speed and you'd usually set this to the flash sync speed of your camera. So now that our light meter is ready, we will set our shutter speed to our sync speed and we'll give it a little flash. And there you go. So now it gives you a little readout. So it'll show us a couple different things over here. It'll give us a EV rating. It'll show you, of course, your shutter speed. That is your sync speed. And it'll give you the f-stop that you should set your camera to to get a perfect exposure. So it gives you a little light ratio down over here. So 3.5 to 1. And that is your ambient to flash ratio. So let's see what other modes are available in this. So if you press this button and you hold it to the right, you get to either the time analysis mode, or if you keep holding, you get to curve analysis mode. And if you guys can see that, it gives you a nice chart, giving your flash duration. So there's a lot of technical stuff that this tiny light meter can do. For the size, for the price, this is a very, very well engineered light meter. So hopefully this covered everything that you guys wanted to see. Of course, you have your color temperature readout on the bottom here. So even if you just want to use this to see the color temperatures of different light sources, you can just take a regular uh, light reading. One more setting that I also forgot to mention was if you go into the settings, so there is a PRI over here, which is priority, and you can set it either to shutter speed priority or aperture priority. Now, when you do your readout, you can adjust your, your f-stop first and then take your reading and then go through your settings. Or if you want to adjust your shutter speed, you just change it to shutter priority mode and then you can adjust your shutter speed first and then take a readout afterwards and it'll give you your results there. So let's take this out into the field. We'll put it through its paces. I'll show you guys how to operate the camera with its very, very unique grip, but I'm excited to try this out. So we've made it over to Quebec. As you guys can see, look at this beautiful, beautiful church, cathedral, right beside us. Um, put a little info of where we are. So I have the Raveni Labs light meter. This is the incident meter. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to use. All you're gonna do is click the little arrow up and it'll give you your settings right on here. And then with one hand while you're working, you can adjust your shutter speeds and your apertures without having to get rid of the light meter. So you can always have that as a little reference point. So why don't we take a quick picture of this and I'll show you guys the results.
What city are we in? <laughs> so right now I'm at the Notre Dame de Lorette Church. This is in like a little town in Quebec City, but we're doing a little road trip out here. It's a little fun, but I have with me the Raveni Labs light meter, which we're using today. So I just wanted to show, kind of demonstrate how to use it. So we're just gonna go out right here. I want a meter for this church, so I'm gonna be out here in the sun and we're gonna take a quick light reading and it's giving me an EV rating of 17.8 so I'm gonna set it at 17 just to overexpose just a little bit and we'll frame up our shot now I'm gonna come back here and the light went a little bit down so I'm just gonna adjust for that and that's looking good perfect nice I think I really like that one Okay guys, look at this beautiful sunset. Oh, I'm loving the colors. I'm gonna work really fast here, but I want to show you guys, I have the Raveni Labs light meter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the mode from incident to reflective. And we're gonna go back to the metering. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna point this at the sunset and that's gonna give us our settings right over here instead of using the incident metering because I wanted to see how bright the sky is. So as you guys can see, one five hundredth of a second at F8. And then I'm gonna just transfer the settings over right here to my camera. I have some Portra 400. And before this fades away, we're gonna try to get one shot. Ugh. There was a ton more color a little bit earlier, so I'm kind of bummed. We, I kind of raced to get this picture, but a little traffic on the way, and uh, I hope this picture comes out good. The color is mostly gone, but we got a photo nonetheless, and I'm happy. I'm enjoying it, you know, but yeah. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this photo. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you guys found this educational and informative. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'd appreciate if you guys drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys wanna see more videos like this. So until the next video, see you soon.